you're watching the Randy and Krista show. I'm Krista Arecchio. This is news that makes you healthier. And today we're going part two on how to overcome infertility with functional acupuncturist and doctor of Chinese medicine, my friend and colleague, Mark Sklar. Mark, I'm happy to have you back. Thanks, we it's could, great to be here. We could talk for hours, we right? Could, we totally could. <laughs> so now we talked about, in our last show, we talked about the three primary reasons for infertility and how to overcome them. And today I really want to drill down to lab work so that okay. our viewers, you know, they can, they can go to their doctor. They can say, run this lab instead, you know, if they're not getting any traction. And so sure. my question to you is, what are, in your mind, the top five lab tests for preconception, whether you're having trouble with fertility or not? Yeah, I think it's really important to know what's going on with our hormones and our fertility hormones specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and so my top five, and I'll maybe go elaborate a little bit more mm -hmm. in just a moment. So my top five are FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, mm -hmm. LH, luteinizing hormone. Mm -hmm. That's for all of you who are uh, taking your ovulation predictor kit tests at home. Uh -huh. That's what surges on, on that pee stick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, estradiol, okay. um, DHEA. Mm -hmm. I've got questions about the <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> and then um, AMH, anti-malarian hormone. Okay. So those are the top five. Um, the the uh, intricacies, the differences between all of them. So FSH really tells us about the quality of the egg. Okay. okay? Um, and we want, we're looking at three different factors, which is why we're actually also testing with FSH, LH, and estradiol, because there's a feedback loop between those three. And so we're looking to see the relationship of all of those to make sure that the numbers we're looking at are actually trustable. Okay, so FSH and estradiol need to be within, um, need, need to be, they talk to each other, and so we want estradiol below 80, and then whatever the FSH is, we can trust. Okay. Okay. Um, FSH and LH do have a relationship with one another. We want to make sure those are one to one. And so, like a common test that we might test for when we're looking for PCOS, as we discussed in the last episode, is looking at that ratio, the FSH and LH ratio, because if they're not one-to-one -one and they start to go beyond that, then that is a little red flag for PCOS. And what, would, what kind of ratio would you have if you're thinking PCOS? At least two to one, um, okay. if not greater. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, so we covered those. DHEA is really important um, it's because if it's too high or too low, that can absolutely influence fertility. Um, DHEA is a precursor hormone to many of our other hormones. Mm -hmm. And so um, the body, it's also uh, an androgen. And so if we have it really elevated, we start thinking about PCOS or how do we need to manage these androgens and mm -hmm. um, potentially testosterone levels. Um, and if it's too low, that could be something that we might see in women with uh, poor ovarian reserve um, and advanced maternal age. Mm -hmm. Or adrenal fatigue. Or adrenal fatigue, yes, it is an adrenal hormone as well. It's kind of like a Goldilocks hormone, right? Yeah. Like just a little bit too little or too much and you're dramatically affected, just like thyroid. Absolutely. But so, um, does it matter now if whether, whether or not you take DHEA, but it's the pathway, right? What your mm -hmm. body does with it and how does it break it down? And I understand that there's a new urine test yeah. to measure that, the Dutch, by Precision Analytics, the Dutch panel. The Dutch and panel, so yeah. That's, this is really cool. So tell us about this test. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite new tests. Okay. I'm using it with many of my patients. Okay. Um, and it does not test FSH and LH, mm -hmm. or AMH for that matter, but it tests a lot of the other primary hormones. Okay. Um, it's beautiful when you think that a woman might have PCOS or... Um, maybe a uh, variation or a minor variation of PCOS, it's important to know what their DHEA levels are mm -hmm. um, and how their body's using it in terms of um, their androgen levels, mm -hmm. right? Their testosterone and their other androgens. And so this test is not only testing your hormones, but it's testing your metabolites and how your body's using the hormones, which is really valuable for what we do in the office because well, it's, it's the getting to the line. why. Yeah, yeah it's, the it's getting line. to the answer. It determines your pregnancy. It determines how you feel, right? Like what? I'm yeah. sure you have some stories of women that you find this out, you correct it, and mm -hmm. their whole experience of life, their energy, their sleep, their moods, like everything is better, everything and changes. they're able to get pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you have a woman who has elevated, um, or their DHA is fine, but they're questioning, or maybe even a little low, and you're questioning putting them on DHA. Right but you see on their pathway 
that when they metabolize DHEA, it goes to the really um, more powerful androgen right. that is very similar to like DHT, which is very similar to what you would see in like a PCOS woman. Right. I'd be very skeptical about giving them DHEA. Right, could do more harm. Than we could do more harm, but then you have another woman who it goes to the more, right uh, you know, the right pathway, the more, uh, the less androgenic pathway. Yep. And I have no concerns about it. And I've seen that to be true in practice all the time. So I'll see that. I'm like, yep, we're fine. We can supplement with DHEA yeah. and see the results we want to see. I yeah. just, this is just mm. so important. I have to drive this point home, you guys. If you're looking to conceive, you, you need to be empowered with this information just in case your doctor isn't to either be able to ask for it or work with, work with Mark, work with his clinic or someone like him that understands this so that they're customizing specific to you and your needs. Yeah. So that is making me think also about pregnenolone mm -hmm. um, and just the role of pregnenolone in fertility. And it's, it seems like a lot uh, more safe, mm -hmm. safer to play with. You know, yeah. I don't feel like I need to see a ton of lab work before I would put someone on um, pregnenolone. So right. can you speak to that? Sure. Well, in that same patient who does have their, their androgen, their more androgenic side is elevated, mm -hmm. then I might choose to use pregnenolone instead of DHEA. Mm -hmm because I could, it's a little bit safer and yes. I could be a little bit more carefree with it and so on. So um, that is, it's, it's it, on the cascade of hormones, it is above uh, DHEA, so it feeds it as well as the other hormones, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, it can have a profound effect on uh, progesterone as well. So it really just depends on what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. but I do like using pregnenolone in certain circumstances for that very reason that mm -hmm. you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it's helpful if you're at the right stage of adrenal fatigue, stage yeah. one or something, I found yeah. it helpful. And we didn't talk about adrenal fatigue, but we would be using those two hormones potentially with adrenal fatigue and adrenal issues as well. Yeah. And the, the Dutch test does test for, um, a, does a, an adrenal profile in conjunction with the hormone profile. Oh, perfect. Which is also why I like it, because I can see all of that at the same time. Yeah, why don't you explain a little bit about why this test is so groundbreaking, because um, I know you say that it's testing it, um, the metabolites, so you're seeing the path, but I mean, I've never heard of a test. This is brand new, the technology of drying your urine, right? And you're yeah. not just sending it in. And so yeah, it's, it's the technology easy. behind it is One, I find that it's easier for patients. Uh, instead of mm -hmm. uh, collecting their saliva or blood, uh -huh. you know, they just pee. Yeah. Um, it is collected at, at uh, four to five different times of the day. Okay. Um, and the nice thing, it's just like a little strip, a little cloth or a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and they just hang it. Okay. After they're done, usually at home, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, think you could do it anywhere. Yeah, before. and then um, your hotel room. Maybe. Don't clean. The <laughs> although I have a patient who works at Google, and she was trying to figure out how she could do it there. Oh, um, yeah. and, um, and so it dries, and once it's dry, it's okay. in an envelope, and off it goes. It takes about two weeks to test, and you get the results back, and it just gives you a wealth of information um, that you really can't get in any other way. Mm -hmm. You'd have to. To, the results you get in this, you'd have to do a saliva panel, you'd right. have to do a, uh, um, a uh, serum blood panel, you'd potentially also have to do another urine panel which isn't dried, and you'd have to put all this information together and start to interpret it. This does it all for you, which it's, is beautiful. It's, well, you save a lot of money in all oh, those yeah. blood tests, and you also don't have to feel like a chemistry experiment yeah. because you're just running one test, one which test. is so nice to see the evolution of testing technology. Yeah. That's great. Um, okay, so we wanted, we were going to also talk about, unless you wanted to say anything else about lab tests, we're just going to talk about, in general, the role of functional medicine in fertility. Mm -hmm. All kinds of fertility, including IVF and IUI. And yeah, um, you know, maybe I should uh, just mention about DHEA real quickly, that sure. for all those women who are trying to, who are considering supplementing with DHEA, mm -hmm. you have been told your advanced maternal age and there's a research study that was done that made everybody believe that DHA is the end-all be-all here. Mm -hmm. um, I would caution you to be very careful. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of reproductive endocrinologists are just without testing DHA levels or just putting just patients it. on it. Mm -hmm. um, and one, the dosage they're using is very high. It's 75 milligrams a day, which is really high. That could make you feel crazy too, yeah. right? And, and just I've anxious seen it. and yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it over and over. Mm -hmm. So I don't put anyone on DHEA unless I've tested to see what's going on, see the pathway, how it's being metabolized. Mm -hmm. And then we usually start low mm -hmm. and then increase. Maybe if someone is over 40 and their DHEA is on the low side, I might be a little bit more carefree about it, but not to that degree. Yeah. So, um, and there are other research studies coming out um, 
with DHEA and showing not the same, showing not the same sort of benefit as okay. that initial one did. Mm -hmm. So I would just caution women to be careful with the use of DHEA. It can cause a lot of side effects. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So back to functional medicine. <laughs> no, that's super important, especially yeah. people watching some. If we save a woman who's taking DHEA right now and she can redirect her course, that's incredible. Yeah. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And the role of functional medicine in fertility treatment. Yeah. So the role here is beautiful. It's getting to the why. You know, I'm sure for everyone who's been following you for quite some time, they know that your goal is to look at the underlying issue and find the why behind things. And that's the same thing in my office. Mm -hmm. We want to figure out why and not just put a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, um, the treating PCOS with, with birth control pills defeats the purpose. It's not really treating anything whatsoever. And we find the same thing over and over. Now, it's an emotionally charged environment where, when we're talking about growing a family or having children. Mm -hmm. And so women and couples will do anything and we recognize that, mm -hmm. which is why they go to the leaps and bounds that they do. Mm -hmm. But when we're having fertility issues, it's our body telling us that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And ideally we want to fix that issue because it's not just, it's potentially not just an issue today with fertility, it could be an issue later in life with all sorts of other health issues. Mm -hmm. So really getting to the underlying issue and fixing the cause of what's causing the problem is really at the core of why I do what I do, but that's what patients who come to us want. They're tired of the band-aids. They're tired of just, you know, how can we force a pregnancy? Right. They want to figure out what's wrong, mm -hmm. treat that, mm -hmm. and then from there, get pregnant. Exactly. Yeah. How many um, patients have you had that you've helped with fertility throughout? I mean, you've been doing this work well over a decade, right? Yeah. How long? Um, close to 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. yeah. How many do you Lots. believe you had to guess? <laughs> um, it's somewhere between five and 600. Five and 600 in fertility. Yeah. That's 600 people who have now been able to have children. It's, it's incredible, the work you do. And now, you know, I took my practice online a couple mm -hmm. of years ago to be able to help more people. And I think, like, wow, you know, in two and a half years, we've helped 7,000 people. Like, that would take me my entire career. Yeah going one-on-one -on -one. and that's why I love that you started and you've created online programs so that you can help so much more than the one-on-one -on -one. I know you're going to continue to do the one-on-one -on -one, yeah. but tell me about your DIY fertility school and tell me about your PCOS program sure that's exactly why I did it because I realized that sitting in my practice or on Skype or the phone with a patient I could only accomplish so much right. and there and I was getting emails and phone calls from women all over the world. What can I do? How can you help me? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I did it, mm -hmm. to help all of those and really have that effect that can really spread. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, my first program, My Fertility School, mm -hmm. is a six-week program okay. that sets the stage and each week builds upon itself. So the first week is talking about the basics about a woman's body, a woman's cycle, um, what to look for, lab testing, which we kind of started a little bit today on, mm -hmm. um, how to evaluate themselves and how to get testing done and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we give them the tools to fix the issues. So each week builds upon it. Yeah. We have a week just on nutrition, uh, which is vital. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole section on stress and the mind-body component and how to manage that piece of the puzzle. Um, there's a section on supplementation, um, really, and then home therapy techniques, which is, we can spend endless amounts of time talking about that, but ways that they can take care of themselves at home without having to rely on going someplace. So for those women or couples in a more rural area and they don't have access to mm -hmm. um, great providers, then that, that portion is really excellent. And then we um, talk about the first trimester of pregnancy, which is essential, especially when we of have course. such a high incidence of miscarriage. Right. And then we do have a, a whole section committed uh, towards insemination and IVF and um, assisted reproductive technologies because even though those aren't my favorite pathways for women and couples to go, sometimes it's necessary um, and there's, there's a time and a place for it. And so we do have a whole section committed to that and really supporting that and um, optimizing that. Exactly, because everything that you're doing, the same thing in our book is, it, it's the soil you're creating yeah. what, when you plant the seed to increase your chances really Absolutely. dramatically of that IVF being successful. So, and yeah. then you get to take care of yourself in the process and change your life and feel better and be happier. And what could be better than that? Exactly. Yeah, that's why we do what we do.
Yeah. So we've put everything that Mark does on our website. You can find him at thewholejourney.com slash reproductive wellness. Mark, I always love hanging out with you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure.